Welcome today, as we are here in Danshui in the study of Mr. Ling Huaiming, who is writer turned choreographer and founder of Cloud Gate Dance Theater of Taiwan, as well as Cloud Gate Two. 我们今天来到非常呃美丽的淡水，来到林怀明老师的书房啊、哦，这边的 study 非常美的一个地方啊。那今天非常感谢林老师有空抽空来为 ICRT 做一个专访。林老师好。Welcome to Cloud Gate Theater. Thank you, and it's a very lovely building. I may I add? It's it's wonderful. It's like a miracle. Uh, in two thousand and eight, our old studio in Bali, where we had been working for sixteen years,、mm -hmm. in fact, is a tin roofed、uh, storage room. It was burnt, and then about more than four thousand. People donated, make the donation to Cloud Gate, and we think Cloud Gate to have its own home. Then it's we couldn't believe that we are staying in such a beautiful place. Taiwan is very much、uh, connected. I think the whole country has been appreciating the art form of Cloud Gate Dance Theater of Taiwan. And of course, Cloudgate has、uh, seeped very deep roots here in the country, and so this whole building it used to be loaned to a different organization, didn't it? It was, well, let's put it this way:、uh, on this location, let's put it this way,、uh, Cloudgate Theatre is sandwiched between two、uh, significant institutions.、Mm -hmm. On one hand is the Danshui Golf Course, <laughs> which is going to celebrate its 100th anniversary、is、next year.、Right. Yeah. On the other hand,、uh, is the Huwei Fort, built in 1886, a、uh, right after the Sino-French War.、So, and then. Between the two institutions, it was the central radio station, which served as a propaganda radio station during the Cold War period.、Mm -hmm. It was a national Chinese radio station for the Soviet Union. Right. All right. But now the time is different, so、uh, the radio station moved out of this place. And then when Taipei、uh, Shen, after the fire, they want us to stay in the present、uh, new Taipei City. So we chose this place and built、uh, the radio station. You are not supposed to touch it because it is a relic、mm -hmm. building.、Mm -hmm. So we have to build a theater, an office, and studio behind. That old building.、Mm. So, as you said, sandwiched between two rather historic institutions, and now may I say that Cloud Gate Dance Theater of Taiwan is itself a rather historic presence. As in the last forty-five years, you've been、uh, entertaining and, of course, spreading the culture of contemporary dance and performing arts in Taiwan. I think so, but then you never know.、Uh, in Taiwan. If I didn't tell you about the、uh, golf course or about the fort, you you are not aware of it. True. Taiwan,、yeah. uh, one of the characteristic of Taiwan is the forgetfulness. <laughs> uh, that we 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 don't care about things past or even present.、Mm -hmm. We never had time. To pause and recall and reflect on the past. Do you think that's a part of our migrant history as an island? No, no, I don't think so. It's just the nature of our media.、Mm -hmm. Our media now is profit-oriented,、mm -hmm. and、uh, for instance, this year is the fiftieth anniversary of the. Student movements in 1986. It started in Paris and then all over, from Europe to the States, Tokyo included, and in China it was 
cultural revolution. Mm -hmm. But uh, very little was written or critiqued in the media. And therefore, the younger generation didn't have this kind of experience. Well, put this way. Uh, on December the 16th, mm -hmm. Uh, 1978, Claudia opened, premiere uh, our first full-length work, which is called Legacy, depicting the journey of the fruit of the migrant, the Chinese migrant, the first settlement in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And it happened. Jimmy Carter announced the breakup with Taiwan on that specific day. It's a pure coincidence. Really? But nowadays, if you go around and ask about it, very few people are aware of it. I think it's a drastic turning point of everything in Taiwan, for the good, for the for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. But no, and the media is, is lukewarm to it. Mm. So, Taiwan, you know, doesn't have a past and therefore cannot look forward to a specific direction toward the future. future. You have to know the past to go into the future. And let's see if we can't jot your memories a little bit presently of at least uh, Lin Huai Ming Lao's past. And of course, a lot of it has to do with Taiwan's history as well, uh, especially during the period you just mentioned. So why don't we start from the very beginning? Uh, what year were you born and what was your childhood like? What was Taiwan like in those years? I was born, mm -hmm. I was born right after Erba, 1947. Few days after I was born, the massacre broke up. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, I think I grew up under the dark cloud of martial art. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that really uh, shaped a lot of me, okay? I mean, the younger generation, again, they, are not, they don't know about martial law. Uh, put it very simple. Uh, under martial law, one feels too short. Why couldn't we grow bigger and taller? But after the abolishment of the martial law in 1987, you realize that it's not about your height. It's the ceiling is presently low. Mm -hmm then, you know, they are f life is full of taboos and therefore fear and therefore suspicion. So that's martial law. So I grew up in that kind of climate. So I mentioned about 1968, I was a college, I was a university student and in fact, I was in the army right after that. And you read about all these exciting uh, uproars of the young people. But as a young person in Taiwan, in the army, under martial law, you look at the sky, and the sky is so big and so immense, but you are grounded. There were a certain level of, um, I wouldn't say oppression, but certainly limits of how, what you can do and or achieve, especially in literature or I would say performing arts. Exactly. Yet, I think it's uh, all the play, the scripts had to be censored. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a writer, even I was only in my teenage. Um, we knew that uh, writers got into trouble and was put into jail. Yes. And uh, all the popular songs has to be censored. Mm -hmm. And uh, my composer friends, they formed an, an, a group 
call themselves as Xiang Zhi Kui, um, sunflower. And it's known now. Why? Because Xiang Zhi Kui looks toward Dong Fang Hong. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the censors are there. They should become artists because they have crazy imagination. But that uh, put everybody in the pigeonhole. Mm-hmm. You found a Cloud Gate dance theater uh, before martial law was lifted, my bad. But how did you, uh, how were you able to traverse the political atmosphere at the time? Uh, dance as a form of ambiguous, uh, well, the body's physicality is very obvious, mm-hmm. but uh, 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 your message conveyed through the movement could be vague and ambiguous, and that's the power of things. I mean, it opens for interpretation. Mm-hmm. But the censors only, they can only read characters. Yeah. So we just do what we do and you don't, you don't step over the line in the program notes. So you have to apply for permission to perform. Mm-hmm. You get the permission. I thought I was okay. But then, uh, when I was about to premiere Legacy, it's a shock to myself. I realized that this was the first theater performance, theater work ever rooted in the history of Taiwan. Mm-hmm. And so I moved the premiere to Jiayi which had the first settlement of the Chinese migrants. Mm -hmm. So uh, we told the society we were there to to pay homage to the pioneers of Taiwan. The truth is I felt I had to move the production away from the censors in Taipei. At least I get a couple of performances. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, Jimmy Carter really saved me because all of a sudden, overnight, uh, the media discovered, the KMT discovered, they say it's Tong Zhou Gong Ji. You have to work together under this kind of very bad situation. And then, Beijing Zhongyang Guangbo Tai, the central radio station in Beijing, immediately said that legacy is a demonstration of xie nong yu shui. So, you know, we are just telling a very neutral story of our ancestors, but from politicians who handle it from all angles. But anyway, thanks to Jimmy Carter, we get away. However, a few years ago, after a performance, uh, a bunch of very well dressed uh, gentlemen. They came backstage to say, Mr. Lin, it's a good performance, but can we uh, take a, cup, a few minutes from you? So I went to a room that full of people from different uh, divisions, from different institutions, but in short, censors. So they had a meeting. Uh, reviewing about the performance they saw and everybody said that it's a wonderful performance and any political incorrect politically incorrect no they said no it's art it's beautiful Mm -hmm. and then the well-dressed gentleman stood up and bowed to me and said Mr. Lin thanks for your time Uh, we apologize but we get piles of Oh, oh yeah, people So we have now after this meeting, we can fought close this case. Okay. So well, you mentioned you mentioned Jimmy Carter a couple of times. It seems like American politics, international affairs between Taiwan and the states had a lot to do with Cloud Gate Dance Theater of Taiwan. And so does ICRT, really. I mean, we've been privatized for 
39, almost 40 years, and we've been very closely connected to American military radio station. Um, you have traveled with the dance troupe to the States to perform no less than 20 performances at least over the years, and recently released, uh, received a Lifetime Achievement Awards from the American uh, Dance Festival. How does that feel now that you know, if so many years later you were finally recognized? Um, by this, um, or not finally, but you were you were recognized to, for for your achievement, your accomplishments. I have to tell you two things. Mm -hmm. ICRT was so important uh, in my adolescent years because it tells you the stories that the newspaper are not reporting. Mm -hmm. For instance, in our journalism, uh, uh, create a uh, journalistic writing courses. Uh, I remember uh, our professor uh, is a guest teacher from Columbia University. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember one day that he brought his transistor radio and put it on the table and we have to write what the ICRT was reporting. Is that right? And it was the assassination of Bob Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and they immediately tell you what's going on. We have to read about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, every, every step I'm, okay, I started as a writer, right. and I had to learn how to choreograph after the founding of Cloud Gate in 73. So I have received many important awards mm -hmm. uh, from the Western ca capitals of banks. Uh, it's quite encouraging. And the one with the American Dance Festival, the Life Ach Lifetime Achievement Award from the American Dance Festival is very important mm -hmm. uh, because I, I was the first Asian choreographer to uh, receive this award. And awardees before me include Martha Graham, Merz Cunningham, right. Pina Bausch, they are giants. So it's quite a recognition. And it shows that how far we have moved because in the world of dance, Taiwan is a village. Mm -hmm. We are not on the map. But even nowadays, if you go to Europe, you say, where are you from? You say, Taiwan. You say, oh, Thailand? <laughs> no, Taiwan is so insignificant. And because we, is, we don't have any diplomatic relationship with most of the countries, right. yeah. so there is no healthy and formal cultural exchange. That means Cloge in a dance company in a small village called Taiwan, you have, when you have to reach out, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And all you have, all can you do is make good work to convince people. We have been to like Life is full of surprises. Mm -hmm. We never dreamed that we are going to Moscow when we were kids, or even when Claude first started. But my God, in the past 11 years, we have been to Moscow for seven times already. Mm. And next year, we are going to St. Petersburg and Moscow for the eighth time. I mean, we read around, and people do not. People are not aware that how difficult it is. Uh, my recent work is called Formosa. It was selected by the most important dance magazine in Europe called Dance, and uh, they, Dance, the magazine invited forty-one international critics mm -hmm. to review about the past season. 
and Formosa was selected as the best production of the year. So by doing this, you know, we feel we, we just can believe it, that we are really recognized and respected. Truly, you've been telling the story of Formosa for 45 years now, and you started in journalism. You started studying journalism as a college student. Do you think there's some sort of similarities between choreo uh, choreography or uh, stage production and in journalism in telling the human story? Ha! Ah, journalism taught me two things. One is to be objective. Mm -hmm. I think that provided me uh, a sense of objectivity when looking at my own work. So, you know, cut it out, redo it, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Another thing is I w journalism, tr the training made me into a garbage can. I mean, you absorb everything. <laughs> you read, I read New Yorker, I've, I read uh, a New York. I read New Yorker every day, and sometimes New York Times, sometimes Times, it's, it's a habit. Mm -hmm. So in a way, as a choreographer, I feel I really know too much. I read, I really do, you know, and I read this gossip magazine, you know, everything. I read words, and that's pretty bad. But then I think that training provides me a wider horizon. Mm -hmm than most of the choreographers. Mm -hmm. But then again, it really a great obstacle. Because things, as I mentioned, is ambigu is full of ambiguity. Mm -hmm. it open for interpretation. In journalism, you have to be factual and precise. So it took me about 20 years to erase words from my mind, mm. to look at everything visually and, uh, and kinetically. Then I started to become an award-winning choreographer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, that's how it happened in the, the second half of the cloud game. Mm -hmm. So they're different. Okay. That reminds me of a lot of the stories in Jin Yong's novels, where sometimes you have to forget the forms in order to truly express and excel in art. Easy I mean. to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, uh, after a while, things is very awkward in storytelling. Mm -hmm. So I guess a creator has to be well-read, has to have critical thinking. What about traveling? Do you think you should also see the world? Because you did a lot oh, yeah, of that, yeah. right? Yes, I think my life has been when I was rehearsing, mm -hmm. the, 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 the newcomers always get confused because I switch from a Taiwanese dialect to Chinese to English <laughs> and back and forth. Yeah. And they don't know what I was talking about. You know, wh and they, they cannot follow my jumps. But uh, I look at the world from Taiwan. I look into the past. I go to Palace Museum. You go to the mountain to see the Aborigines, the, to, to attend their uh, rituals. You go to Taoyuan, and you have on to a board, and you are in a different country. So yes, it's been, you look at Taiwan from outside, mm -hmm. and you reflect about yourself why you are there. Well, before we started our interview, I was having a chat with uh, Mr. Lin, and we were talking about cell phones and how everyone's always constantly looking at their cell phones nowadays. Do you feel that with access to the internet, even though we are susceptible for, to information from all around the world, it actually narrows our visions, quite literally and maybe metaphorically? I think it makes the whole world more chaotic. People stop talking. Mm -hmm. Even even in Cloudgate, these ladies, they were sitting next to each other. They text to each other. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. So you know, uh, yes, internet uh, brought the whole world to you, but you don't recognize 
the friend next door. Mm. And everybody is kind of isolated and living in an imagined world. And it, the informations are wonderful, but only when you are able to digest them mm -hmm. and think. So nowadays, uh, so some of the young things and young people on the subways, they, they think with their fingers. Yeah. And just the fingers are moving, and very fast. And uh, I don't think any information states. I think maybe it's only one hour. La uh, la Those information may last well, an hour, mm -hmm. the most a week. Mm -hmm. So things come and go. But life is not like that. But then saying this, I feel I'm old. <laughs> and so I think young people must they have their way to figure out how to live a life, how to move the society into a more beautiful stage. Well, we were mentioning, we talked about how as a creator, you should read a lot, you should travel a lot, expand your horizons, maybe interact with your performance and other creators as well. Uh, in light of that, what are your expectations for Taiwan's performing arts, or maybe the future of Cloud Gate Dance Theater of Taiwan? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, when Cloud Gay started, mm -hmm. nobody expect it going to survive. Let alone that it really, like a critic in London said, Cloud, Cloud Gay has become a stationed mm -hmm. institution mm -hmm. in the cultural landscape of London. Nobody knows it. So how can we say what will happen? Mm. But uh, we always look uh, for an open sky and wish that some beautiful sunshine, sun, sun, sun will come up, will rise. You never know. But, uh, but then again, talking about creative art, it's not the whole society or the money or anything. It really takes a couple of talent mm. and hard work and genius. Mm -hmm. They uh, create good works and they change the whole world. But then, uh, if there are talents, but the society is so barren in their support of the art, the genius won't be able to grow. Mm. So we don't know. Where is the next talent, the giant? We know, but we can, well, we can pay some money to buy a ticket to the theater to support the performing art. That's exactly what I'm getting at. So, Mr. Lin, over the last 45 years, you have created a space, you've cultivated the soil and nurtured a lot of Taiwan's performing arts talent. And now, pretty soon, we're going to be able to see uh, the crystallization of some of your works in the last 45 years. So can you tell us a little bit about this uh, review performance that is coming up? Well. Cloud Gay opens its f the, the, the celebration, is a gala in celebration of its 45th anniversary mm -hmm. by presenting a retrospective program of mine. Uh, and it comes, it's gala, so it's short pieces, maybe 15 short pieces, mm -hmm. shorter and longer, yeah. I think it's fun to see the, 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 the evolution of the styles. But most important three, I showcase the dancers. How can you differentiate the dance and the dancers? So I choose in the program. I, so Joy is good at this piece, so Joy is going to perform this. Mm. So that makes an exciting evening. But then, there's no more ticket. So those who still want to see this program, for the last time, uh, wait. Uh, we may do it in the free outdoor performance, July. 
twenty nineteen. Really? Yeah, and that will oh. be my bow out okay. because uh, December thirty first, mm -hmm. New Year's Eve, next year, I bow out as the artist director of Cloud Game. Mm -hmm. And we're going to wrap it up with a bang uh, at the end of the year and even get a chance to uh, see some of the performances that you have created over the years in July next year. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the tickets have been sold out. Um, hopefully, we just added one last show, I think, a few days ago. But it's, and it's, I think it's, 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 I think it's gone. But then, uh, watch out, sometimes people would sell their ticket for double price. Ah, uh, scalpers, um, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so try your luck. <laughs> and uh, hope uh, good luck to your wallet as well. <laughs> so on the 16th of November, the first show uh, of this gala starts in Taipei and we move, move down to Taichung and the brand new uh, art center in Kaohsiung as well. Right. Is that right? I yeah. think in Tainan and Kaohsiung, there are still tickets. Okay, yeah. great. Check it out. Yeah, Cloudgate okay. a website. Uh, artistic director of Cloudgate Dance Theater Taiwan and also the founder of the whole Cloudgate organization, Mr. Ling Huaming. Thank you so much for taking the time to interview with ICRT. Thank you. Thank you.